Hey guys, what's up? I thought I'd come on here and first of all let you know that I have a video upcoming um, later on on or probably be already uploaded by the time you see this and that video well it's probably gonna be later on anyway because I might upload this while I'm working still because I'm on lunch right now but anyway that video is gonna be the five reasons why Sparity, Spike Rarity is still referenced and acknowledged and used in the franchise even today. So, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Um, but I thought I'd come on here during my lunch. I've got about 33 minutes, 33 minutes or so before I clock back in. But I thought I'd come on here and kind of talk about something that a lot of people have pointed out. You know, even to recently. I mean, a lot of people that are fans of MLP, FIM, just like I am, just like Silver Quill, Josh Scorcher, a and, a and Y, Keyframe, Lightning Bliss, you know, uh, Golden Fox, I love Kim Possible a lot, a lot, the whole shebang, if you will. Even cartoon gentlemen and many others. Anthro, you know, Map, Anthro Pony, Dr. Wolf, you name it. Despite that, all of us, and even the non uh, MLP fans, have all given the MLP movie last year uh, great praise. Basically, saying that it's good, it's decent. And, you know, heck, I was excited. I was. I basically gave a live reaction the moment I got, got, out, got out of the theater. I did an instant live reaction on one of the Facebook group pages. And I basically stated that it was a great movie. I gave it 10 out of 10. And I stuck by it. I even mentioned that. Um, I even mentioned that in my spoiler and non-spoiler review videos that I did on it. That you can find here on my channel. But I thought I'd come on here for one main reason. When it comes to the movie, despite all the praise we can give it, and despite the fact that we could give it 10 out of 10 ratings, 5 out of 5 ratings, say it's good, it's great. Looking back on it, and looking back on the movie, which is now on Blu-ray and DVD and digital, and on demand and probably going to end up on stars soon because that's where a lot, a lot of the Lion Gates films go and maybe even Netflix despite all that despite all the positive praise we give it looking back on it a lot of us do kind of feel that there is some flaws to the film you know now, truth be told, none of us are going to take back what we said when we first saw the movie and reviewed it. But what we're going to basically point out, though, is something that the creative staff does not like to point out. Sorry about that. But it's something that the creative staff you know, does not like to point out. And what they don't like to point out is the fact that is the fact that the movie does not take place between seasons seven and eight. It takes place in actuality between seasons four, five, and a bit of six, but mostly between seasons four and five. And if or five and six, if you want to look at it that way. Um but yeah, the movie does not take place between 7 and 8. The only reason that Season 8 acknowledges it because is, be is basically due to the fact that the show, as we all know, is done by the same people that worked on the movie. That's it. That's why you have hippogriffs. That's why you... You know, that's why you have the acknowledgement of the, the hippogriffs uh, in there, if you will. You know, you know, in the series now. You know, that's why, you, you know, you have the mention of the Storm King and Tempest and all that. 
because pretty much the creative staff realized, okay, we're going to be working on season eight. We need to tie it into the film, even though the film, and they probably know this to be true, is more of a movie that takes place between four and five or five and six. If you catch my drift, seasons four and five or seasons five and six. Pretty much the truth. It's pretty much the truth there. It's pretty much the truth. And and the fact that the creative staff doesn't just come out and admit that. I'm not trying to say it's a slap in the face, but it's kind of like it's kind of like to us, you know, they try to basically. I'm not saying it's a slap to the face. I understand their intentions, the timing of the release and everything. But it's almost like, really? You know, you're telling us that it came out at this time, but in actuality it was being created and developed during this time, and you couldn't just maybe put a disclaimer or something uh, before the film and say this takes place between this time, this, fr this time frame? kind of give us a better idea I mean I'm sure kids would be like they went with the folks would be like what is it what's it say they probably be asking asking why is it saying that and the parents could probably say well it's because they're telling you that the story uh, is you know takes place further back just a little further back maybe by a few seasons or years so and you know what if they would have done something like that it would have probably would have made thing it probably would have helped the film because then a lot of people wouldn't be jumping on the fact that a lot of the characters of the main six were acting out of character more specifically twilight you see twilight oh oh you know twilight's oh oh seeness in the film twilight's oh oh seeness in the film is one of huge debate because of the fact because of the fact that she wasn't acting like the twilight that we've seen in season seven and even season six and a bit of season five but she was more acting more like the twilight that was just that had just come in to being the princess of friendship you know she just come in to being the princess of friendship and she's still learning the ropes. And that the festival is like one of her book, what is one of her first big tests as to prove she's worthy of being the princess of friendship. It's ba the, t the festival is basically one big huge test. That's what it is. It's nothing more. It's just one big huge test as and hurdle in her uh, freshly anointed princesshood that's what it is and that's why a lot of fans look at how she reacts or reacts and or you know reacts to the situation you know uh, stresses out at the beginning if you will you know stresses out at the beginning if you will stuff like that to them, that's not season seven Twilight or even season six Twilight. That's season four to five Twilight, right, right there. You know, because Twi I mean, because honestly, Twilight freaking out about the about the friendship festival, yeah, it could be tied into season seven and six, but more so season four and five. And again, like I say, this friendship festival she was putting on was basically like the first big test she had in her basically essentially her first few months as a princess of friendship but it's not just that either it's the fact of how she reacted to what was going on around her as they were trying to go from land to land or from country to country you know destination destination trying to find 
help against the Storm King and it all culminates with her basically blowing her top at her friends by letting all that frustration and stress get to her and people have pointed out that hey even Josh said this, Josh Scorcher said this in his review Twilight and her friends had made bigger mistakes aches, than what she just did by lashing out at her friends, blowing her top at her friends you know and yet we're expected to believe that Twilight the current Twilight season 7 and 6 Twilight would do that no she'd be angry with them yes but not to the point that she would lash out and say something and, and say what she did no she'd basically want to sit them down talk to them and explain why she's upset that's it because she had evolved, she's becoming more. Or as the princess of friendships, that's what's going on. But yet, you know, you have this moment in the movie where she does that. But to counter that, you have the characters themselves. You have three of the main six acting a little bit out of character. Not too much, but more so as the season four and five and maybe perhaps six counterparts. That's the way they were reacting. I mean, you had Rainbow Dash do what she did, resulting in them nearly being captured, captured, and the pirates nearly being destroyed. Well, the boat was destroyed, but them, but they themselves were able to survive miraculously. You have Rarity being smitten and generous and befriending uh, someone in Capper. Who initially wanted to sell them off and then on top of that you had pinky doing what she was doing and a lot of people would say that yeah that's somewhat that's somewhat what they do now but they also point out that yes that's somewhat what they do now but it was more likely but it's something they would have more so that it's basically something they would have done more often that's the word I'm looking for more often in seasons four and five basically you know pinky acting the way she did you know having you know acting out the way she did rainbow dash doing what she did resulting in that sonic rain boom rarity doing what she did it was basically basically this those are actions that those three would do more often in between four and between seasons four and five if not earlier or in earlier seasons than they would do in recent seasons which would have been six and seven and mostly now eight but mostly seven and six so So basically for the characters to act the way they did, it, from Twilight to Rarity to Rainbow Dash to Pinkie Pie, with the exception, with the exception of Fluttershy and Applejack, you know, with that exception, and even the exception of Spike, in a sense, the char the, characteriza uh, the, the characterization of four of the main six were characterizations of the season four and five uh, character uh, uh, characterizations, basically. The characters, I should say. That's what I'm trying to. That's the word I'm looking for. The characters. The characters of four of the main six were basically characterizations, nations that took place in between four and five. That, that's the truth. And again, again, um, I think honestly they know that. They know that, but they wanted. But here's the thing: because of the timing of the movie's release, they wanted the movie to tie in 
to uh, tie in tie in to being related between both to being related uh, related to both uh, the recent season and the current season that's the re that's the re that's the main reason why they say it takes place between seven and eight because they wanted to tie it into it even though the story the story arc itself and mostly the characterization of four of the main six represent represent are basically representations I should say of the season four to five uh, characters and that's the truth I mean heck a lot of people point out well what happened to discord could you bring discord back you know what happened you know why didn't you bring him in season if this movie actually took place between season seven and eight yeah Yeah, they would have brought Discord in, and even though he would attempt to change things, by the time he would, he'd probably suffer the same fate that the Luna, Celestia, and Cadence did. And let's get turned to stone, thanks to those green orbs that Tempest was kicking around. So even if he had been called upon, he probably would have suffered the same fate. But again, that also looks, but with Discord not part of the equation, that proves the fact that basically proves the fact that the movie actually takes place between four and five because at the end of season four discord had just kind of redeemed himself from betraying uh the main six uh to Tirek before Tirek betrayed him so discord basically not being there makes sense seeing as though they don't want to risk the fact or risk the chance from a continuity standpoint that Discord might betray them again but this time to Tempest and the Storm King. And that's, I think that's the probably the best incontinuity explanation you can come up with as to why Discord wasn't there. But again, had this actually taken place between seven season seven in the current season then yeah he would have been there he would have been in it, he would have been part of the situation no matter what no matter how you slice it no matter how you look at it he would have been part of the situation and a lot of people know that a lot of people know that he would have been part of the situation no matter what And then you take a look at Celestia, Luna, and Cadence, and how they were disposed of. And this is something that a lot of fans just do not like. It's like you got these three most powerful princesses, and they're taken out with ease. Basically temporarily killed off and put into a living death, which is, you know, being petrified or turned into an inanimate object. So I was just looking at something there. Well, they say being uh, petrified or turned into an inanimate object, which is basically a living death, temporarily, temporarily killing them off. But here's the thing. If this movie actually took place between seven and eight, Luna, Celestia, and Cadence would have had a more active role and they wouldn't have been captured so easily. You might have even had one of the princesses, in this case, Luna, be able to escape in a company Twilight and the rest of the main six on their journey. And another character that would have accompanied them would have been Starlight. Because if this took place be because if this took place between seven and eight, Starlight right now has been integrated as almost basically a main member of the group. So the main six is now the main seven when you include her. So she would have also accompanied them on this journey. And she probably would have been the voice of reason between what was going on with Twilight right, and what was going on with three of the main, three members of the main group Oop, on that journey. She might have been the voice of reason if you catch my drift. The point is, all these kind of things would have happened. The po my point is, everything that I just talked about there you know, with Discord 
being part of this if this really was between seven and eight starlight being part of the group who was between seven and eight going on the journey and being the voice of reason maybe along with luna as well or even celestria uh who would actually put up more of a fight than they did you know if this is really see between season seven and eight those kind of things would have happened, but it, they didn't because the movie takes place between seasons four and five, and maybe a bit of six, but mostly four and five, five if not five and six. six. And I think the time has come, honestly, for the creative staff to stop ignoring that. I mean, look, yes, you've, in, could, you've integrated, you've integrated the sea pony hippogriffs into the sea, into the new season. That's great. You've integrated and acknowledged and referenced elements of the movie. Fine, that's great. But you know as well as we do that the movie never took place between seven and eight. It took place as during earlier seasons like four and five or five and six. And they need to address that. Because yes, I stick by what I said after I came out of the theater you know, yes, I stick by what I said after I came out of the theater. And, I, and I'm sure everybody else that's seen the movie and given it a positive praise will stick by what they said. But I think in return, the creative staff, Megan McCarthy, Josh Haber, Jason Teresen, Nicole Dubach, M.A. Larson, anybody else involved, needs to at least acknowledge that the movie didn't take place between 7 and 8, but took place between four and five or five and six just due to the fact that certain things didn't have certain character certain things didn't happen certain characters were involved like they had been recently on the show things like that and if you're one and if you're going to say well starlight made a cameo along with trixie uh here's the thing if you kind of take a look at it yes it's animated to match up with it but you can kind of tell that even though it's moved, the animation even though her having that cameo part, even though she had that cameo part uh, in the film, here's the thing. They added that in basically at the last moment. When they were doing the animation, it was probably between season six. They were doing the animation or finishing up on the animation, putting the final touches. And someone, I'm guessing Megan McCarthy said, okay, we need to add Starlight into the movie. You know, let's add, you know, it's like, it's like the script was already done, but they needed to acknowledge Starlight now being part of the series, being part of the group, being Twilight's friend and her student. So that's why you had her in that part, in that little cameo part, doing the song We Got, you know, doing the We Got This Together song. So, you know, when she appeared alongside Trixie, it's basically to, that was basically the only way they were able to acknowledge that, hey, this movie supposedly takes place between seven and eight, when in actuality it doesn't, because, like I said, Starlight would have been part of this journey and maybe the voice of reason. And that's the truth. That's the truth. You, you know, that's what would have happened. That's, that's, the, that's what would have happened. And the same goes with one of the princesses accompanying them as... One of the princesses accompanying them as well. That was one of my co-workers. But one of the princesses accompanying them as well. So, that's how I look at it, to be honest with you. That's how I look... Uh, basically what the major flaws are when it comes to this great movie this 10 out of 10 animated film that I loved seeing and not just because I'm a fan those are some of the major flaws now do now did I say it was perfect I may have said it was perfect but even a perfect film has flaws and the flaws are basically the fact that the creative staff once expects us to believe the movie takes place between seven and eight, season seven and eight, when in actuality, 
it takes place between seasons four and five, if not five and six. So hopefully they, hopefully uh, they'll hear this, someone on the creative staff will hear this and they'll start to at least, and at least they'll come out and acknowledge that to be truth in, in some shape or form. So uh, let me know, but anyway, that's really all I'm gonna say on it. I've got about 8 minutes before I have to clock in, or 18 minutes before I have to clock in uh, from lunch. Uh, let me know what you guys think though down below, comment if you like, what are your thoughts on what I had to say on what the possible flaws could be? Do you think there's truth to that? Let me know down below, comment if you can, I really appreciate hearing from you guys, and I'll talk to y'all later. I gotta get some a little bit of lunch, lunch before I clock back in. So. Till then guys, take care. Thank you for watching, take care. And if you're living in California like I am, try to stay cool when it comes to this uh, uh, tremendous heat. So that's all I'm gonna say folks. So till next time, I'm out and be on the lookout for the other video, the five reasons why Sparity, the spike in rarity is still used, acknowledged, and referenced in the series. Till then guys, God bless, take care. I'm out.